Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you called Black Ops 3, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. This is where I sit down and do a serious review of Black Ops 3. I'm going to tell you everything that is good about the game, then I'm going to tell you everything that's bad about the game, and then I'll tell you everything that is downright ugly about the game. I don't do a whole lot of serious, like, you know, hardcore video game reviews, but every time I get to play a game early, which is usually at E3, Gamescom, something like that, I make a video, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, so that I can tell you as much as possible about it, so you can make up your decision if you want it or not. So this is is my review and we'll start off with the good. The graphics in Black Ops 3 are good. I like them. They look next gen. They're clean. They're crisp looking. The water looks good. The reflections look good. The lighting is good. Everything is good looking about the graphics in the game. I really don't have any complaints about those. I also thought that Advanced Warfare's graphics were pretty good too, but you, I don't know. People had different opinions about that. I also feel that the aesthetics are good. The color scheme for Black Ops 2 is something that I very much so liked. I like the bright, punchy future colors the orange and whites and the blues. As a person with mild color blindness, having bright, vibrant colors is absolutely essential to me because when you make your game too grayscale or too dusty or too brown, it becomes impossible for me to see anything. Also, I just think it looks good in general, not like it, other practical reasons. I think a lot of people like that color scheme, and I'm partial to it. Because of the good graphics and because of the good aesthetics, it is very easy to distinguish bad guys and other game elements. I can see trip mines, I can see hive mines, I can see claymores, I can see exactly what person I'm fighting, what ability they have, what they could and couldn't do. I can recognize their character model from far away. I can see their guns. I can see all of these things and it helps me visualize the game and it helps me play really well and I think that's another good thing about the game. One of the things that I had previously complained about in other videos when I when I got to place a couple months ago was that the objective indicators are very complicated or very kind of uh, colorless and difficult to see. Those have been completely fixed and revamped. The objective indicators are very good now. Not only do they change colors very distinctly, but they also have on their attacking, defending, taking, and very, a couple of other indicators, so you will always know what's going on with the objectives, and that is very, very good. Another good thing is that the game feels like Black Ops 2 at its core, and I think most of you would agree with that being a good thing. I personally always liked Black Ops 2. It's one of my favorite Call of Duty games, and this game at its core, despite the movement, the wall running, the swimming, the thrusting, all that sort of stuff, it still feels like Black Ops 2. Of course it's different. Of course it's not exactly like Black Ops 2. But when you pick it up and play it, you're definitely going to feel the Black Ops 2 influence. The new movement is capped at two stories. That's very good. That's one of the reasons that people didn't like Advanced Warfare or other 3D movement games, is that you can move three, four, five stories, and it became about who could get to the highest point and shoot down on people. That was a huge problem in Titanfall as well. The Treyarch design team decided uh, three lane maps, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But if we're going to have some sort of verticality, we're capping it at two stories. We play on 16 by 9 monitors, which are wider than they all are tall, and our peripheral vision does not train us to look up and down, we look sideways, so there's not a whole huge degree of verticality, and when you play it, when you see the gameplay, you'll know that, and I think that's a good thing. I also think that the weapons are very good, in that they're unique, and that the weapon attachments are good. Weapons don't feel like clones of each other, and some Call of Duty games, it's not very distinct, like one weapon is just as good as another, or it's statistically similar, or all five of these weapons are bad, or boring, or whatever. The weapons that I got to use were all very different, all very distinct, even if they were, you know, three or four different full auto assault rifles, they felt very different uh, from each other because they were. Not only was the animation different, the sound effects were different, the performance was different, and I think that was a good thing, and I think that's one of the things that Treyarch has always done really well, is they've always brought a lot of unique weapons to the table with the exception of Black Ops 1. Black Ops 1 was kind of the exact opposite, but all of their other games always had some good stuff, and I think that's good too, and most of the familiar attachments are returning. We have a few new ones like High Caliber and other stuff, and we've, we've kind of unrestricted them, so you can do crazy stuff like put rapid fire on sniper rifles. It just makes you work the bolt faster, and I think that's a good thing. It, it just adds more variety to the game. Speaking of the weapons and perks, there are no broken weapons or OP weapons or perks in the game so far that I've experienced. No perk is essential, no perk is crutch, no perk is a must-have, no perk is overpowered, no gun is too strong that can't be killed by something else, nothing is too ridiculous, there's no... It has a very good sense of balance, just as is. Obviously, some guns are better than others. Obviously, there were a few I did like and didn't like, but there wasn't anything that stood out to me as like, oh my god, this is broken. Oh my god, this is wrong. No, so far, the balance seems very good, though that is very difficult to tell from one playtesting, so we'll add a little asterisk to that. As far as perks and equipment goes, there are lots of fan favorites from Black Ops 2 returning. A lot of familiar faces you'll see in your perks and your equipment, and in the guns, they don't have, I think, hardly any, if any, returning guns exactly as as they are. They didn't bring the models back, but some of the ones performance-wise are coming back, like the FAL, like the 5.7, the MSMC, 
see they're back. They have different names. They have different models. Most of them have been slightly twe tweaked to change the balance, but the gun is essentially coming back, and I think that's a good thing. I think a lot of you will be happy with that. Pick 10 is superior than pick 13. The idea, which uh, that's you know, p this game has pick 10, just standard pick 10 perks. Everybody liked that from Black Ops 2. Pick 13 in Advanced Warfare was a great idea. It made sense. I can see where they went with that. That hey, you know, your kill streaks can be part of the things you can pick, and if you want to throw a kill streak away, you can pick up an extra perk or attachment. But what ended up happening in Advanced Warfare is the kill streaks were kind of hard to earn. And most people, instead of risking it to have two or three kill streaks, or even any, really, is that they're just like, why would I do that when I can have three more perks? Let's just load up with more perks and attachments. So that's gone. We now have pick 10, and you pick your three kill streaks before each match starts, just like we always did. They're not upgradable, they're not customizable, they're very normal, and you lock in before the game, you have to commit to them, the same way that you have to commit to the specialist before the game. The specialist, I'm going to say, overall are a good thing. I will definitely be talking about them in the bad and ugly. I love the idea. I love the models. It does add variety to the gameplay, but there are some issues with them. So I'm kinda, I kind of got part of that in good and part of that in other places. As I discussed before, there are no crutch perks. All of those are gone. There's no toughness. It's completely gone, so everybody's on a completely even playing field. Blast Suppressor is in the game, but for the absolute life of me, I did not find it to be necessary at all. The pings, I didn't even notice the pings on the map. Like, not even nothing like it was in Advanced Warfare. There's no lightweight. There's none of that kind of stuff. So with no crutch perks, we had a lot more perk variety. Aim down sights mechanics have been revamped, so ACOGs and sniper rifles are way more useful. As you've probably seen in some of my videos, some of the assault rifles I just run ACOGs on because I like that better. I'm a terrible sniper. That's not the thing that works for me. If you want to see good sniping, go check out Pimaj's channel. He loved the snipers. I like them too. I like how they change the sensitivity when you aim down sights. The quick scoping has been more or less unhindered in this. There's no goofy inaccuracy penalty. There's no punishment for quick scoping. It works a lot like it does in MW3 with one exception and that's that you may, will make two exceptions. You don't aim down sights as fast. You can't like put quick draw on and like super fast ADS and nail people and there is absolutely zero auto aim on the sniper rifles. So your quick scoping is unhindered but you have to be good with it. You can't, it's not spammy like the ballista or anything like that. You're gonna have to work on it. The spawns were also good. I got 98% good spawns. Very rarely did I spawn in a bad situation. I only got spawn killed once during my entire couple hours of playing the game. And I think that's a very good thing. That was in an objective mode too, so that kind of gets weird when people push and try and flip spawns. So spawns are good. We don't have to worry about that. And lastly, hit detection also felt good. I had no issues with the hit detection in the game. And that's going to kind of transition into the bad section, is that maybe it was too good because I was able to dump truck people pretty easily with the hit detection. It felt superior to Black Ops 2, just a little bit, but not all the way, which caused the time to kill to be a bit faster, and now we're moving into the bad section. Time to kill is definitely faster than it was in Black Ops 2. I'm not sure why. I've addressed this in a different video. I'm not sure if it's because of the hit detection, if it's because the weapons are better, if because there's different multipliers or something, but it is a little bit faster. It feels like 10-15% faster, and maybe that's too fast. A lot of people really like the Black Ops Ops 2 time to kill. That's kind of what everybody's gold standard Call of Duty game now. Uh, you may or may not like this. I'm going to put it in the bad. And also in the bad, I said I had 98% good spawns. I had 2% bad spawns. Any bad spawn is still a bad thing. We don't want that at all. We want that to be perfect if possible. It's not a perfect world. We try to make it as good as possible, but nobody likes bad spawns. While I do think the maps were good, they do feel smaller overall due to movement. I talked to some of the developers about this, and the maps in Black Ops 3 are actually larger than most of the maps in Black Ops 2 as far as total square footage and area, but because of the way you move, because of how easy it is to, tra to traverse and climb and take water paths and stuff like that, they feel smaller. You can get places quicker. They don't feel as gigantic as the other Black Ops maps. I guess that's kind of like the AW or 3D movement problem. If you give people really good movement, they get around really, really quickly, so the maps feel smaller, even though they're actually much, much bigger. I am also unsure about how the specialists are going to be balanced. While I do like them, I think they're fun. I do think that some of them definitely need to be rebalanced. I've seen some of them already have been rebalanced since I played a couple of months ago. Some feel stronger than others. Some feel kind of broken, honestly, and I don't know about that. They're going to have to be really careful with that. It can be really fun, but it could also be really annoying if everybody just ran the same specialist. In the section, I'm going to say that shock charges are back. I was not a fan of shock charges. 
I thought they were annoying. I thought people spammed them all the time. It was really frustrating, especially when they put a shock charge on top of a mine, or they would kind of, like a sniper would have like two of those things that so was impossible to get to, and I'd give them a warning. I'm not a huge fan of this. They are back. They don't seem as strong as they were in Black Ops 2, and they stand out a little bit better, but I just don't like them in general. And there's also lots of detection type perks and abilities for search and destroy. So we have Dead Silence and Awareness back. That's like the gold standard, the heavenly two for that. But we also have, I think it was Sixth Sense and Tracker. Tracker shows you footsteps on the ground of where people walked. It's like four or five second timer. So if you just miss somebody in Search and Destroy, you might could see their footsteps and follow them down. Sixth Sense allows you, it like pings the mini-map whenever enemies get too close to you. So like if somebody sneaks up behind you, this big red bar shows up on the mini-map. It won't show them exactly where, but it basically says, hey, there's one enemy behind you. It doesn't work all over the map because, of course, then your mini-map would be going crazy. But it's like once they get within like maybe... I don't know, SMG range, it lets you know that could be really annoying for Search and Destroy. Also, maybe like the see-through walls thing that we have on Seraph for Search and Destroy might be kind of annoying. I, I don't really even play Search and Destroy, but I'm trying to think about this for your guys' perspective. Lastly, let's move into the ugly. I'm sure this is what a lot of you have been waiting on. There were some very melty kills, and while I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it was like Ghost or anything like that, which was extremely melty, I did occasionally get almost insta-killed. Some of the guns and some of the abilities can can insta-kill you. Uh, headshots kill you very, very quickly. Assault rifles are very dangerous. And sometimes it felt unskillful. Sometimes it felt like I just, I got nailed and I didn't have time to react. Or in Black Ops 2, which is what I was comparing to and what I was expecting, you can take a, sh a few shots and kind of scoot around the corner and everything will be fine. And this one, unfortunately, I would take a shot and be like, oh, I need to run. And then by the second shot, I'd be dead. Don't really like that. It wasn't common. It wasn't all the time. It wasn't every time, but I did get some of those. I'm going to talk about some of the specialists now because they were some of the ones that worried me the most. Nomad really, really worried me. He looked really strong. He had one ability called Rejack. It's kind of like Final Stand, except you don't get to shoot in it. So his Rejack ability allows him to revive himself. So you'll run up to Nomad and you'll kill him. And if he hits the buttons as he's falling, he can use this ability like once or twice per game to bring himself back to life. He'll like inject himself and you get this little cloud of green. So it's like a super small smoke screen and he'll get back up. He can't shoot while he's down, he can't use his pistol, he can't final stand you, but if you shoot and then run away and don't pay attention, he might get back up and kill you. I have found that you can just continually hose him while he's on the ground, and as soon as he rejacks himself, he will die because you're hosing him, he'll instantly die. But if you miss it, kind of annoying. He also has a hive rocket launcher. No, not rocket launcher, my bad. It's like a mine launcher. It tosses these mines everywhere that are insta-kill mines. I really... I don't know, I didn't find that to be very fun running over those because you could chunk them and forget them for a little bit. Not a big fan of that one. The Annihilator on the Chinese girl is still very strong. It's pretty redonkadonk. It's one of the few that you can't necessarily see coming. You might think she has a regular pistol and then you get insta -gib. They have nerfed it since the last time I played. It has no auto-aim at all now. It's way harder to use and the little hitbox is like way, way harder to use. But good people can still nail you with it. And the other ability, which is on Profit, which is Psychosis. This one used to be Glitch and it used to be on Reaper. It's the one where you hit the buttons and you jump backwards in time three or four seconds. It's my favorite ability. I love this ability. I actually do feel that it is fair and balanced, but I'm putting it in the ugly section because I know many of you do not like it at all. Many of you feel that it's unfair. I've read numerous complaints about it. They don't think it should be in the game. It's cheating. It's all sorts of other things. Or like, can't fix lab lag, make it an ability, something like that. I really like it. I do think it's fair. I think it plays well. It makes sense in the context of the game. But many of you won't like it. So it's ugly. And three things at the end aren't directly gameplay related, but they're just more or less facts about the game that you'll have to deal with if you're interested in it. It's a 3D movement game. It's not Black Ops 2. It's not a 2D movement game. It's not a traditional shooter. You, Nobody is going to buy this game and play the classic mode. Don't be like, yeah, there's going to be a giant community playing hardcore classic. No, there's not. Everybody's going to be playing regular, and it's 3D movement. It's not as vertical as other Call of Duty games. It's not as, you know, 3D as some other games. But it's 3D, and if you don't like 3D movement games, then you're probably not going to like this one. Also, when it comes to the, X, or the PS4 exclusive, a lot of Xbox users users and pros feel shafted. I don't think it's a bad thing going to PlayStation 4. I think PlayStation 4 is ultimately a better console. Call of Duty has been on Xbox for a long time. There were some members of the community that bought Xboxes just for that DLC just because 
because they want to play COD, because they want to go pro, because uh, brand associations, or for a dozen reasons. And it's been that way for like six years now, maybe more. So changing that, a lot of people feel shafted, a lot of people feel, you know, jilted. Is that the right word, tilted? I'm not sure. I'm super tired. <laughs> I'm trying to do so many videos before leaving to Singapore. And pros also feel shafted, because all the pro players, they got masters, they're, they're like gods on these little Xbox controllers, they know the system, they know the platforms, and now it's going to be moving to PlayStation 4. I don't know if competitive is, I assume it is, because the whole sponsorship contract thing is, they have to buy new equipment, they have to buy new gear, it's not as bad for the right proper pro players, because it can be a tax write-off, because they have the money for it, but all the amateur guys that are kind of stuck in the middle are really getting the shaft on that when they might not have the money to swap over, and that's an ugly thing. Guys, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.